What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. If it's your first time joining the show, welcome to the show. We got a good one for you today. Like my man Steve Harvey done say, it's Frankie Quinones. I love this dude. And Creeper makes an appearance. Cholo Fit Creeper came on here, bro. We had so much fun. I love this dude. Go see him live. He's great. Also, big announcement, Boston. New Year's Eve and New Year's Eve Eve, dude. I'm playing the 30th and the 31st at the Wilba Theater. Boston, get your tickets right now. They're available. AndrewSantino.com. AndrewSantino.com. Don't get them from anywhere else. You guys are sometimes like, oh, I got them from this fifth party site. Don't do that. Go to andrewsantino.com, Boston. If you're in the Boston area, come see me. You can see me on New Year's Eve or New Year's Eve Eve. If you already have plans, come see your boy, andrewsantino.com. Enough rambling from me. Let's go to the episode. In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. You were that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. Five dollars for the whiskey and seventy-five dollars for the horse. Gingers, oh hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. It is the first time, and he's not even here yet, so we have a special guest. It's Frankie Quinones on the fucking episode, but it's Creeper is here to fill in until he can get here. Creeper, thank you so much for coming on the show. Hey, no problem, homie. Glad to hop out and everything. I appreciate you, man. So you're you're a, a Los Angeles based personal trainer. That's what you do. Yeah, homie. I'm a fitness instructor. Eh? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you, what's your background with fitness? Um, you know, I just stay pretty active, homie. I was in a bad place, homie. I was like, hey, fuck the world. The world's against me. Mm-hmm. And I said, hey, Creeper, that's no way to live, homie. You know what I mean? So yeah. I said, you got to get your mente right and your physical también. So I started to work out. And then folks started coming to me like, um, you know, like, hey, Creeper, can I get a session? Like, damn, trip out, you know? Right. So then I developed a Cholo Fit Rutina. Mm-hmm. And, and then, you know, abracadabras or whatever, like, people started, hey, I'm into it. And I said, dang, you know, and so here we are, you know. What do you charge for a session? What's a Creeper session? It depends on me. Like, um, last time, okay, so, like, a couple weeks ago, it was my, it was my, uh, one of my younger primas, uh, her daughter, well, so she's my prima too, the, the uh, quinceanera. So mm-hmm. we need a lot of things, eh? So I did a session the other day for some, uh, this homie of mine has uh, uh, tables, a lot of folding chairs and, and tables. Mm-hmm. So, hey, that was rent free, homie. I give him a, you know, I didn't have to pay the rental fee for the tables and the Oh, thing, shit, okay. And I give him a session. So I'll barter, homie, you know what I mean? Is what I'm saying. Do you um, judge based on, like, like if can anybody come to you or is it kind of you have to fit into a mold? Uh, no, nah, it's for everybody. Cholo fits for everybody, homie. Yeah, like, unless you're like uh, you're not, like a lame or you're negative or, or uh, right. you're just annoying. It's like, hey, homie, then this is not for you, right? Because I don't want to kick it with you right now. Could I? Do you think if I wanted to come to you to get cholo fit, am I like, am I? Yeah, of course, I homie. Could. Come on. Okay, yeah. and as far as fi- money goes, I'm kind of tight right now. So, is there something I could do in exchange for some of the lessons? Yeah, homie. I, I mean, let me see. I mean, like introduce a- you to some um, bankers, maybe or. There's a couple of whites that I know that you might like. Oh, that, yeah, that's a good point, homie. You could get me into that, those, uh, the white, uh, those social the environment white or the social pipelines, what yeah. we call them, mm-hmm. for, you know, hey, homie, so I could take troll of it to the next level, get get investors or whatever, homie, because mm-hmm. you know about that stuff, eh? Cause, that's kind of you know my thing. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. one of the whites. And they get, I, I kind of am allowed to move seamlessly in different groups as, because I'm a, I'm a orange white, I'm a... I'm a non-traditional white is what they call me. Yeah, homie, you're, so, you're like kind of exotic, eh? Yeah, exactly. I was just thinking that, homie, because sometimes I'll get hyenas that are like, hey, like I've never been with a cholo, like, or or uh, never been with a, a a fool like you that's a fitness instructor. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so I've even been with a blonde hyena, homie. Yeah, yeah. Wait, seriously? Yeah, and I've never been with one, eh? But and you so, have now. Exactly, well, have, like a little handful. I don't want to brag, homie, mm-hmm. but it's a trip, eh? Bl- blonde hyenas are, or I didn't know this, but I guess they're known to be curious, eh? So mm-hmm. they're like, hey, you know, like, like, what are you about? And what's under those cutoff sweats? And I said, damn, yeah, like, what's up? Let's find out, you know? Yeah. And so, so, yeah. So I think that maybe you might have that appeal, like, like on some bucket list. Some, like, you know, Hainas might be into you. Like, hey, I've never been with a, a ginger vato, you know? Oh, that, I like, kind of like an that. an orange of ginger vato, like, you know what I mean? So right. like, dang. An know? orange, yeah, a little bit more flavor. I look like I might be a little bit more spicy than some of the regular whites. 
Exactly. They're too vanilla, and I look like a little bit of paprika. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't consider you a regular white because it's like, oh dang. And then you have the, you know, you have the beard that's well maintained and it's red, homie. It's like, Mm -hmm. what is this, vato, homie? And you're fit, though, también. Obviously, you do. See, you're in shape. You know, and it's like, what do those, you know, what what does a ginger fool do to work out? You know, does he have a different routine or is it the same or? Right. You know what I mean? It's like I have a lot of questions, eh? You know what I mean? But I'm I'm intrigued, eh? Right. No, I don't want to get all use big words, but I'm intrigued, homie. I like the, I, use big, as many big words as you want in this room. How, what's the biggest word do you think you know? Oh, uh, onomatopoeia, eh? What does that mean? That means like when, it's, when, when you say something that sounds like what it is. Like when I go, it's like, oh, it's onomatopoeia, you know? Oh, right. Because it's like, eh. Like, oh, that right. sounded, it is what it sounded like, like, eh, you know? It is what it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah, it is what it sounds like. Like, uh, oof. Exactly, homie. That's an onomatopoeia, eh? Yeah. Tell me this. How do you stand? Uh, where do you stand on uh, Latin X? People try to infiltrate that in society. Latin X. Well, you don't I mean, like it. To me, homie. I mean, it's hard, eh, to, mm-hmm. for me to accept. I mean, I'm like, if you want to say that, if you want to call gente a Latin X, Latin X, or right. whatever, um, then do you, homie? I'm not gonna be mad at you for using that word, but don't get mad at me for not saying Latin X. I say Latinos. Somos Latinos, homie. Mm-hmm. You know and Latinx, eh, like my dad, my, my, just uh, props to my, the OG, mi padre, homie. He's like, he was telling me a story the other day, homie. He goes, hey, me, he's like, I saw this, uh, I saw this uh, fitness thing on, on the, on the Latinx channel. And I go, Latinx channel? And then it wasn't, it was a segment, eh, on the Latinx community, but this fool thought it was a channel. Oh. And I'm like, it does sound like a channel. Like, oh, you got the Latinx channel? You know, like. Yeah. He thought, he thought it was a channel and I said, nah. I go, that's what they're saying to encompass, like, and my dad was like, just like, what? It you threw know? him off. And they go, homie, if you they did surveys, homie, like not that many fools. No, it's just gente that's online or in the industry mm-hmm. that is like, no, that's what we're calling ourselves now. But if you go out to the calles, homie, if you go up to a, you know, a, a, a manguero or whatever and say, hey, you know what Latin X is? They're like, what? Well, guess that's what homie. You know? Right, they don't know what that Latin is. Latin they're trying to X me out? No, homie. No, like, right, uh, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. Latin X them right out of this society. That's what they're trying to do. Yeah, homie. I'm so, sick of these whites that are trying to do this kind of stuff. And that's what I, I, I don't want to say it out loud. I said it. I know, but I'm glad you said it, homie. Thank you. Because I feel like in the background, it's a white fool back there like, hey, you know what? Nah, you know. Let's it, of up. course it's some yeah. white dude. It's a snaky little white dude who's never met anybody from your community. And he says, what's a good way for me to sneak in and judge other whites? That's what all they're doing. These are bad whites. We don't mess with bad whites, man. No, nah, no. Nah, we I mess don't with like the, bad whites. The good ones, the exotic ones. Speaking of whites, egg whites. Is this, Do you eat egg whites or do you put the yolk in? I put the, yem, the yema, homie, the, the yolk. The yema. That's the favorite. That's the best part, That's homie. That's what I like. Yeah. But see, but as a fitness instructor, as a life coach, someone who's into fitness, what are the things that people should and shouldn't eat? Can you give us some of that? Yeah, I mean, my thing is, homie, everybody knows your own body. You know what I mean? Yeah. For me, I like to, A, if I did my, my feet in my workout, and then I like to get a lot of cardio in. You know, I'll, oh, I'll run my five miles. Do you run, you run like this? Yeah, yeah homie, yeah, because you get a more feet in my workout. You work the triceratops three pods right there if you keep your elbows up. Okay. Boom, and then, and then you could even turn. I'll even go to the side, but go in that direction. Boom, that works the oblique case. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Obliqui case. Yeah, yeah. See? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Watch out what he thinks. You got a little man. accent, homie. <laughs> okay. That's what's up. Um, but yeah, homie, if you get that in, then I'll be like, all right, I'll have like a reward, you know? Which is like, I like donuts, homie. You know? <laughs> donuts are good. <laughs> donuts are good. What are we talking? And, sprinkles? And panduce, homie. Like a concha, you mm-hmm. know? Like mm-hmm. phew, the little thing. <laughs> homie. That's a reward. So you That's do something reward, good, you homie. get a reward. Exactly. But you can't just be right there. You know, I have my energy tamales, mm-hmm. which, you know, they're tamales that are a mixture of uh, uh, carnitas and peas too, and to, you know, it helps with your muscle recovery and everything. And it gives you a little energy on me. Uh-huh. But some fools will be like, oh, hey, energy tamales, I didn't lose weight. But you can't just eat them and then do nothing on me. Right. You know what I mean? It's like when you drink an energy drink and then, ah, oh, but I'm just right here to watch TV. Like, hey, but I'm focused right now. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, you need to go do something with your life, eh? Yeah, be active. You know what I mean? So that's that's my answer to that. Like, however many calories or however they say that you burn on me, then, hey, then, you know, then it's okay to have a donut here and there. But, hey, I would say try to eat things that will will help you things to move, eh? To make, you know, to make you shit good. Homie. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because if the shit's moving... Then a, then the universe is moving, and then I'm not that good at calculations, but 
That's a good one, homie. It seems to equal itself out. That's right? what I'm saying, homie. The yeah. more you put in, the more that comes out. Yeah, get your so fiber you, in there, homie. Right. So if you're shitting enough, you can kind of eat almost anything that you want. Exactly, homie. Yeah. Basically. You know, and I, and I, and, man, you know, because I'm getting older now and this and that, eh? And sometimes when I work out too much, I don't drink enough water and all that, and then I get a little, you know, ah, you, get, you, get, you get stuck on me or like, you oh, know, right. when you're not having good movements or whatever, mm-hmm. it's like, it gets frustrating. It's like, dang, you know. You know, there's nothing worse, say, than you look down at what you're creating in that moment and you look down and it's two little pebbles. Two little, yeah, two little pebbles. Little rabbit fuck. pellets. I hate that. And it ruins your day, homie. You right. know what I mean? I and you got to drink prune juice like a, like mm. a viejito, like you're an old person. Mm-hmm. And shout out to the viejitos out there, no disrespect. But you know, you don't want to drink prune juice like that, homie, but I will if I have to. And then if you're I sitting there like, ah, oh, dang. And you know, you're pushing. Right? And don't push. Don't push. Yeah, that's, yeah, don't see, that's push. the thing, homie. No, they you say push. that's bad, eh? It is but bad. But there you was can, a yeah. You well, can prolapse your anus. Do you know what that is? Is that when they like when the weightlifters when they're deadlifting and their their culo comes outside of their mm-hmm. body? <laughs> Dang. It, it's like uh, remember the the snake you put your finger when you were a kid. You know the the little uh, the thing you get at like uh, at CVS and stuff. You put your finger in the snake and it wrapped around and all that stuff. And then that, you pull it. And you pull it. That's and then that's kind of what your anus does. It just falls right out. You push too hard, you can you can fall it right out, and it takes them a long time to get it back in. So be careful. Don't push. Do oh, not push yeah. on the toilet. Dang. What, what if you had a homie that was like, hey, you want to see a trick? And then he went like that, and then, oh, and then you saw it all out? like rectal uh, kind of whatever. As long as he can get it back in there. Right? As long as he can suck it right back in. You got it in. back in. He's like, all right, let's have a beer. You tight. Be like, have a beer. Homie, that was crazy. All right, I'll pull that. That's a party trick. on me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so. <laughs> what are your qualifications, Creeper? Like, how do you, uh, did you go to school to... To teach, I mean, like, how do you, how did you get to this point? Wow, yeah, homie, I, I you know, I had a lot of time because I was in a studio apartment. <laughs> um, uh-huh. The walls were coming in on me, so I developed some, uh, you know, some work, the workout routines right there, homie. I just really gave me time to focus, to think about it, and uh, yeah, that was my thing right there, homie. So but, do you did it all yourself. Nobody taught you at all. Pretty much, homie. You know, I had some I had some homeboys around me that were into fitness, but they were doing like the basic things and you know mm-hmm. and all that burpees. You know, burpees work, though, homie. They're pretty feet, man. You know, that's yeah. when you're you know because you have tight quarters in there when you're in a studio apartment, like some of us have been. You know, you only have this space to work with, so you do the burpee, and you know, you do enough of those as a feet my workout, homie. But it was good to to switch it up. And then once I moved out of that studio apartment <laughs> into the world, I was able to use. When you say tools. studio apartment, are you are you talking about a prison cell? Something like that, homie, yeah. I don't want to, you know, that's neither here nor there. It's in the past. But, I got it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can you talk about why you went away for a little while? Uh, you know, I'd like to focus on right now. On moving forward. But it was nothing, you know, I didn't really hurt. I, I didn't hurt anybody, homie. You know what I mean? I just was kind of. You stole something? Yeah, you know, this and that. You know, a car? Trying, trying to get fed, yeah, you know, a couple things. Eh? Yeah, it was those things inside the car too. Well, I have a report that we pulled up online. You tell me if any of this stuff is true, okay? <sighs> oh. Tell me if any of it is true. Dang, well, white people already do their research, eh? Okay, yeah. so ready? Yeah. Uh, stolen vehicle, yes or no? That I have done? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was a long time ago, yeah. Okay. It was a Buick LeSabre. Does that ring a bell? It was a blue Buick LeSabre. Yeah. Okay. Uh, three catalytic converters. You were, you were, you were, it was found on your property. Three catalytic converters. Yeah, well, that's all they found, but it's not all they found. Oh, so, okay. All right. This is, uh, armed robbery of a local liquor store, but the, uh, but the arms was not a, it was found that it wasn't a physical weapon. It was a bike chain. You used a bike chain to rob a liquor store? Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, I don't, I'm not going to point a gun at somebody, homie. That's, that's an innocent person. Right. But the bike chain, what, 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 what would you have done with the bike chain? It would, I mean, at the time I was on narcotics on me. Mm-hmm. So I was showing that fool. I was doing like somersaults and, and cartwheels on me with the bike chain and doing oh, all that pedal. I get it. It made it look like I was a trained a uh, martial physician or martial artist artist on me got it and i was doing all that pedal because because i was on one on me i was oh. smoking broken windows i mean you know the okay crystal meth eh? and so it, it was you know long time ago yeah long time ago but i was showing that about the woman so he was like dang and, like, and i didn't know bike chains could do like this that this says so. public indecency in boyle heights were you naked at one point in boyle heights uh, damn i mean that was in there <laughs> yeah there's a f- it's all here but is that not real? I mean, this because some of the stuff wasn't confirmed. You could have been acquitted of some of the stuff, but was the public yeah. indecency? Well, charge? I was acquitted of that one, homie. But yeah, I was. Uh, but they do I show was up there, and I was at my primo house in Bacoima. I was running down the street right there. 
Um, but yeah, I was naked right there. Okay. But I was, it was it was a summer, homie. You know, it was. Oh, was it midsummer? It was a summer, homie. Oh well, I get I could see why that That's would get saying, acquitted. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's a couple of things on here that were expunged. We had one of our research assistants back there do a couple of, uh, just a few more things that we had found on here. This one says, um, <laughs> I don't know if I'm a little embarrassed to read this on the show, but. Uh, Huh, this one says kidnapping the elderly. You stole an old person Man, at one. That was a bunk ass charge, homie. Yeah, that was a bunk ass charge. It was my tia, eh? Oh, oh, and so they thought you were stealing her because it says stolen from a. a no, and then when care. the when the hura came, my tia has Alzheimer's, huh? You know? Oh wow! And she's not with us anymore. You know, bless her heart or whatever. Sorry, uh, but she had a good run, and eh? she was the hundred and three eh, when she passed. You know? Oh, seriously? Yeah, but, wow. but when that happened, though, she it was she was about. 89 or something. How did 80? she pass? What did she pass from? 103 is qu quite young. Yeah. So she, I, I don't know. She went to sleep one night, homie. And didn't wake and up. And she left, she left uh, uh, some uh, frijoles de olla on the, on the pan. And they were burning and everybody uh. got all mad. Hey, what happened? And then they went and she was asleep, eh? Like forever. She Which is, you know, that means you died, eh? I'm sorry so, about that. And yeah. I apologize for that. I am sorry about that. No, no. She's cool, homie. But, but when the hura came, when the police officers came, mm-hmm. You know, she was like, oh, I don't know who this guy is. And I'm like, hey, homie, she has Alzheimer's in my tia, you know? Right. And But, you know, there was white cops, eh? So they're like, nah. Yuck. Put your hands behind your back. And I don't want to say the words that they said to me, say but it. it wasn't Latinx on me. They didn't oh. call me that. <sighs> you know? So. The stuff's got to stop. Me, put hands behind my back. Put me those bunk-ass charges when it was my tia, homie. <sighs> See, that's, and this is why I do think that we... But there is one more. I'm not going to, I don't want to embarrass you at all. And I'm not going to, I, again, I don't judge you, man, because I really like you. I think you're nah, a great guy. I hope guy. not. I mean, you but don't this, seem like a, like a person that would this be This does say thir 13 women were found in a residence at one time and you were given the charge of, well, pimp is probably the proper term, but uh, the male term for madam, I guess, is it's pimp. It does say, so were you organizing a bunch of women? Um, I was, it was a self-help center, eh? So I was already oh. on my path, homie, to, oh. I've always wanted to help people. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So you weren't pimp, you weren't a pimp at any point. Because it did say half of the women were naked. Okay, homie, because sometimes clothing eh, blocks positive vibes from getting out, eh? You know what I mean? I get that. Because it's like, hey, who told us to put that? Just because that, that homie Adam and Eva, they, they ate the apple. Or, they were naked, that. weren't they? Exactly, homie. And then they ate the, but they ate the apple because the serpent and this and that. Where you're talking about the serpent was like putting his cool out like that. Like, mm -hmm. hey, want to see a trick? And they were like, hey, I'm going to eat this apple. And then next thing you know, they're like, oh, we feel some way about our bodies. We have to cover it up. Next thing you know, corporations and, and, and uh, consumerism and capitalism and hey you have to wear this to be cool and you have to spend this money and so I say hey you know what Charlie everybody take their clothes out so they're not like oh you're not wearing you know what are you wearing Kmart brand I got Target brand oh I'm better get rid of you. materialism exactly homie oh I like and that and then a lot. to let your positive vibes go out right you know okay yeah I would send them out there to be like hey if other fools want to experience your positive vibes then you know they should they should pay homie see, I like this a lot I see. This is the kind. This is the kind of positivity that needs to run through the world a little bit more. And yeah, women uh, and, and men out there, if you don't feel like wearing clothes because your positivity is is restricted, take that. Take your clothes take off. off. Homie, yeah. Take it off and let your positivity just r push out into the world. I love this. I really do. I'm gonna slingshot a couple of artists your way. You tell me if you like them or you don't like them. Okay. Pitbull. I like that fool. He's good, huh? Yeah. Homie. Do you think he is Mr. Worldwide? In a in a lot of ways, yeah. You yeah. know, just because. You know, I have a familia or my, you know, my, my tias, whatever, they go crazy. I have, you know, he gets the, the younger generations and the older ones, they go crazy for that fool. Yeah. And I, you know what, homie, I'm not going to lie. I, I work out to some of that fool's music. You do. You know, because he comes out there, homie, boom, boom, like that, you know? I do. And he's like, hey, Mr. Worldwide, whatever, homie. And he, ah, ah, you know? And okay. he, he's in good shape, homie. Is like, you know, say, so, you know, I get down with that vato because even thinking about him right now, look, I'm look, you're bouncing. Like that. I'm like, damn, yeah. homie, you know. Okay. So, so gracias por eso, pitbull. All right, pitbull. What about uh, J Lo? J Lo, um, is she from the block? I, yeah, you know, Jenny from the block. Eh? Yeah, no, no, she is. I know, but you know, I know she. I don't know what she, she went to. Like, I know she's from the Bronx, homie. But well, she went to like a Catholic school in the Bronx, which is pretty firme. Um, but yeah, you know, she's been famous for a long time, homie. Right. But fools were hating on her when she got the Selena. I mean, the Selena things all popped her off, eh? True. So we can't forget that Mexicans are kind of what 
blew her up, you know? So, and they were like, Mexicanos are hating, like, oh, she's not Mexican, da, da, da. But then they saw that booty. They saw that bitty, bitty, boom, boom. And they said, all right, homie, you know what? Now that I think about it, yeah, she could play Selena. <laughs> and she did, eh? She did. She so, was very good. She killed it, homie. Yeah, she killed it. So it's, and, then, it's, oh. and then Geely, which is which was bad. That one was really, really she's, bad. Oh, that, what's that latest one, homie? Hey, props to Este Vato, what's his name? Owen Wilson, but... Uh, yeah. Uh, the one that went straight to Peacocks or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, hey, thank you, Peacocks, for all the opportunities, but that one, eh, it was like, hey. Fuck. Didn't work, did it? it like, you those are too old for that right now. You Sometimes know? you swing and you miss, you know? Yeah. All right, what about Bad Bunny? Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny. Yeah, I've had the opportunity to meet that Vato, man, and he was nice, eh? And so you he liked cool. him? Cool dude. Ah, oh, he, he couldn't have been, he was real nice on me, and he was just thinking about musica. We were like having a conversation, and he was like, and I'm like, hey, what are you doing? He's like, oh. You know, he's working on another song in his mind right there. That's pretty brilliant, though. He had though. a little production studio in his mind. And I was you like, dang. Can't turn that off, can you? Yeah. Like, right now, you're probably thinking about fitness stuff, aren't you? I'm thinking about fitness, homie, but I, yeah, exactly. I'm doing push-ups right now, homie, in my mind. I can actually see your head. Stop for a second. Yeah, see, I see your head doing push-ups. Look at my ears, Oxy. 13, they're, 14, 15, They're working 16, out right 17. now. What's the, mo- what's the most amount of push-ups you can do? Uh, and straight in a row? Yeah. Uh, I think the last time was 125 on me. 125, no stopping. No stopping on me. How far can you run? I could run, well, every day I run, or, you know, I like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I do about five and a half miles, eh? Every that's day really it takes good. me 45 minutes. Wow, that's really good. Five and a half miles is good. Yeah, it's not bad on me, but the longest, I've ran some in some, like, you know, 10Ks or Ken or I don't know the calculations of it, but... Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of miles or whatever. 10K, that's pretty far. Yeah. So Would you I, ever do a marathon? But I've never tried to do like, nah, I don't, I'm not a, like, hey, homie, I'm not trying to be like, hey, break records. And it's more for to get my mind right and where right. I want to, like, hey, you know what? I had enough, eh? Because I do all that pedal and then my, my, you know, I'm getting older now, homie. I can't just be out there like that, like, oh, hey, wait, let me break it. Let me time it, time it. Right. I don't care about that, homie. Like, yeah. let me give it a good one. I get my little 45 minutes in. And then you know, that's a good done. amount of cardio. I mean, that's already a little bit, you know, because then when I take it overboard and then I'm more hurting later and putting the ointments, you can't sabe la chingada todo eso, homie. I'm like, hey, you know what? What am I doing, eh? What I'm not doing? training for, I'm not trying to be a Navy SEAL, homie. Right. I'm just trying to be right here. We got one fan question is uh, one of the one of our female fans asked if you're single because I guess a lot of the women out there want to know if you're available. Yeah, homie. Um, yeah, I'm single, homie, but, you know, uh, yeah, you know, I just got to be careful, eh? You know? So, well, Cause there's a lot of hyenas. I'm not to be like, hey, I'm Mr. Cool Guy, or I'm, you know, I'm real sexy, or can I like? But I get requested a lot for a one-on-one session. Only. Oh, and you know that's code for something else. What is it? What do you? What is it code for? I'm pretty sure sexual activity only. Okay, well yeah. it's consensual. So why you? But you don't want to take them up on any of that, huh? I don't know. I just have to be careful, eh? Cause you got to separate work and pleasure. You know what I'm saying, homie? Yeah. yeah you don't want to, you know. Drop a couple pebbles where you work, or which is shit where you work. Is that how they say? You you don't shit where you eat. Oh, that's you're what allowed they to say. shit where you work. Usually, oh, okay, homie. You have, probably have to if they're see white people. Hours. They know, homie. Yeah, yeah you know. So well, you we're don't, kind of born in offices, you know. Yeah, exactly. So you don't shit where you eat, homie. You yeah. don't shit where you eat. Yeah. yeah, and I get that. And you're getting paid. You're getting paper where you what what you're doing is a successful career. So why step on that? So creeper is available though. You are in in the open market, and do you want to find love? I do, homie. It's just like, you know, I need I need somebody to, I need a special person, homie, that can understand. I understand. I have my sessions, eh? I'm really, you know, passionate or whatever, homie, about my, my cholo fit sessions mm-hmm. and then helping, I'm all, I'm all about helping other people and everything and just bringing those positive vibes, eh? Yeah. You know what I mean? So I got a lot of love to give, homie. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, you know, I've, you know, I try not to just hook up with, you know, my, my clients. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I've hooked up with some clients. Mm-hmm. Um, that makes sense. You can try, you try as hard as you may. You, t- you still do, you need to eat. I mean, I'm a, I'm a man. Eh? You're a you grown know? man. I have a, I have a chorizo, how they say it. Yeah. I have a, and mm-hmm. sometimes that fool, he's like, hey, she wants to kick it. Why are you going to deny, deny her those positive vibes? And I'm like, Dang, you got a point on me. You know, all right, let's go. And you want but positivity then they, they to come crazy, through. Though, they do get crazy. They'll be like, leave your headset on. Leave your bandana. I'll be like that with my headset and my bandana. Do they, hey, you know. Go on. I don't want to get all like graphic right. or whatever. But you can. I'll be like, boom. And I'll leave my, I'll leave my socks, eh? Yeah. And my pantuflas. And everything else goes off. 
That's why I have this hole right here, dog. One hyena was like trying to just grab me like that, ah, and she ripped my pants on me. Wow. If I take them out like that, I'm running around the pad, eh? like going like that. I walk around her. She's not like that. Boom, boom, boom. And mm -hmm. I get back out. Hey, you know, it's a party, homie. It's a You're party. in high demand. You know? Well, I'm I mean, I'm grateful. Look, I'm grateful, homie. I'm great. And I'm grateful that you came. What? Oh. All right, Frankie's here. Um, I appreciate your time on the show. We, did, we do want to get Frankie in. Oh, yeah, on yeah. The show. Yeah, yeah. So, so we'll, uh, one sec. So, we'll, um, let's, let's end this piece with you. And we usually end the episode. Uh, with one word or one phrase, Frankie's going to get to do that for, for his. But you want to? Uh, why don't you look in that camera and say one word or one phrase to end your portion of the show? Whenever you're ready, one word or a phrase, whatever you want. You go ahead in that camera when you're ready. Okay. Uh, 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 one word and one phrase. One word or one phrase or both. You know what? Totally up to you. Whatever okay. you want to do. Uh, 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 let me see. Whatever. And birds of a feather. That, does that work? That's great. All right, so what's up? In here, we pour whiskey. whiskey. And now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Ladies and gentlemen, I've talked to you guys about BetterHelp many times on this show. I believe in therapy. I believe in speaking to somebody to work out some of your issues. We all got issues. Trust me, you ain't alone on that island. Your mind is spinning around. You're trying to figure out how you can get stuff done without overthinking everything. And BetterHelp is here to help you. And it can be tough to train your brain to stay in problem-solving mode when you're faced with challenges in life. Let BetterHelp help. Uh, the best part that I think about this is that it's not uh, in person. Uh, you can do it from the comfort of your own home, your couch, uh, your backyard, uh, your car, wherever you are taking a break from work and you need to talk to somebody. BetterHelp can be there for you. It's done exclusively on the interwebs. And I got to tell you, it's much cheaper. It's convenient. It's affordable. It's entirely online. You can get matched with a therapist. And uh, all you got to do is fill out a little brief survey and switch therapists at any time that you want. Get a little bit of help from BetterHelp. I do believe they're great. And when you want uh, to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash whiskey today to get 10% off of your first month. That's BetterHelp, better dot -E com slash whiskey. Well, boys, it's no secret that women love beards. Women love beards and we love growing them. It's nice to get a big red bush on your face like your boy here has got. Having a great looking beard requires work, whether it's beard growth oil, styling products, or a top of the line trimmer. There's a small army of products required to grow your best beard. Luckily, Beard Club is here to help. As the leader in beard first men's growth and grooming, Beard Club delivers quality hardware and consumables that'll help you get a better, thicker, and fuller looking beard. I gotta tell you, look at your boys. We just trimmed it the other day, so it's not as thick as it was, but you know, it's been thicky, thicky, thick sometimes. Uh, all you gotta do to get started, go to beardclub.com slash whiskey. Use my code whiskey to take the beard quiz. They're going to recommend a growth or grooming kit that's tailored to your beard's needs. I loved it. I like the oils to massage. It smooths out the beard if it gets too coarse and prickly, especially uh, on your lover's face. If they're like, dude, you're kissing me hot and it hurts your prickly face. The highlight of the grooming kit is the PT45 trimmer. Truly a beard changing device. It is wonderful. And I use that one just on my face. I got a couple other ones for my downstairs. Uh, there's no painful hair pulling. It's sturdy. It's wonderful. The growth kit also has these strength, uh, st uh, sprays to strengthen and moisturize your beard hair oils uh, that prime follicles and optimal growth. And it's awesome. You got to give it a try. If you got a beard, you got to do it. No matter what type of beard you got, Beard Club has the perfect um, fit to match your needs. Beard Club, over 2 million beards serve. Come on, man. Grow your best beard today. Take 20% off your first order when you go to beardclubs.com slash whiskey. Beardclub.com slash whiskey. Use that code whiskey. That's beardclub dot com slash whiskey code is whiskey for 20 percent off your first order beard club dot com slash whiskey ginger i like gingers welcome back to the show uh i appreciate creeper for coming on the show and doing his thing uh we're now joined with our original guest that was supposed to be here from the beginning that was running very late but that happens frankie kionis thank you for coming to the show Oh, thanks for having me. Sorry I was late. Homie. No, no, you're not sorry, man. It's, uh, I texted you multiple times. I said, you're going to be late. Why don't you let me know? And you said, I'll do what I want to do, bitch. And uh, that's how that went. So. All right, fuck it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. I thought I was going to play the part and be like, oh, no. I'm not, no, it was great. Dude, thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for, for bringing some Creeper with you because I think that was love. Love Creeper, man. Yeah, yeah. So funny. Love him too. Good guy. So look, um, I, I knew of you through the stand-up world. You're a hilarious stand-up. And I hit you up recently because I told you how much uh, I love the show 
It's uh, honestly, it's one of the funniest shows I've seen in a long time. If you guys have Hulu, you have to go watch the show right now. If you don't have Hulu, that's crazy because I think they're just giving it away for free at this point. <laughs> so just go sign up for Hulu. Yes, sign it away. up for that shit. You gotta go, go, gotta go watch the show. It's you, uh, Chris Estrada. Um, who else have I seen on the show? Uh, Michael Imperioli. Yeah, Imperioli, who incredible from Sopranos. Right. Um, it's such a good show. Uh, it's it. I will say this. My first thought was uh, was Sup Fool because of. Um, Oh, Felipe? Felipe yeah, Esparza, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. But you guys named it This Fool. This Fool, and I was like... It was called Punk Ass Bitch. Oh, is that what the, that was the original the name? Yeah, yeah, but then, uh, yeah, yeah, then when it got picked up, they were like, hey, we might want to change the name. <laughs> and the white executives came in, he's like, yeah. listen, Punk Ass Bitch is not what we, we need to be Disney saying. We know Disney owns Hulu, so I was like, oh, God, I don't know about this. Trust me, I'm a, we're on Hulu too now, and we're Disney, we're part of the mouse. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, right, that's FX, right. So we know, like, yeah, we're, yeah, we're yeah, subject to it. Yeah, they own everything. <laughs> the first season was really, really good, man. Honestly, if you guys haven't seen what's going on right now go see the show it's so funny um you guys got a second one or no who knows yeah it's looking good man i mean mm -hmm. it's already it's already being worked on so yeah i gotta tell you i don't want to spoil anything for the show but the scene you have with your ex was made me laugh so <laughs> hard man it made me laugh so hard especially because you're talking about the curvature man i just i died laughing i thought that was so fucking funny <laughs> and are, are they letting you improv on the show a lot or, or are you guys sticking to scripts no, no, we, yeah, there's definitely a lot of improv and stuff like that. Right. So, you know, um, all those guys have been homies for a long time, so it was cool. Like, before the, the writing started, it, uh, there, you know, it was already known that I was going to play the role of Luis. So we just, ha we just had a lot of fun with it, and then it was easy for, for them to write towards it. And then, and then like, they were kind of just throwing alley-oops, and I was like, yeah, I was just able to kind of be myself and then, like, do, do, do it up. And then, you know, Pat Bishop, Matt, Matt Engelbrenson, and then... Uh, you know, they directed most of the episodes. And then Diego Velasco directed a couple, but they would always give me my my takes, you know. Or, they let you do your thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, all right, Frankie, this one's for you. All right, you want to do another one? All right, cool. And then I'll just fuck around. And That's then, what I love. I mean, we yeah, try to, we try to that do that shit. sometimes on Dave, but I mean, we do. We improv. I, 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 I do a lot because I know at some point, if you don't get it your way, they're going to have it whatever way that they have it. So you're like, you just have to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly, like, you're like, yeah. oh, I have to say it. I, even if it doesn't end up in the cut. Like, we just had a couple of cuts the other day, and I'm supposed to just wing out stuff just to try to get his attention to get him off the phone. And I was saying some wild shit, even though you're not, it's not going to make the cut, but you're like... <laughs> it's still so fun. But yeah. it's so much fun, because yeah. you're like, I, ha I have to do this, you know? Like, yeah. I was saying how, like, M. Night Shyamalan was, uh, you know, he's not looking at me, he's on his phone. I'm like, are you listening to me? And he's like, mm-hmm. I'm like, M. Night Shyamalan is, is uh, redoing Schindler's List. And he's like, uh-huh. And I'm like, yeah, the twist is that there's no Jews. And he's like, mm-hmm. And I'm just going through all this bullshit to try to see if he'll crack, you know? <laughs> if I was like, I was like, turns out, you know, dogs give you cancer. And he's like, uh-huh. And he just has to stare at his phone. And so I did five minutes of just saying bullshit. <laughs> and it's just the, like, that's when it's the most fun. When it's not fun is when it's 15-hour days and you're like, you got to do this shot, that shot, this Ooh. shot, that shot. And then it gets tiring, right? It's hard. Oh, man, it's exhausting. And then, you know, I had a, you know, Luis has a bunch of tattoos. So, you know, how that covered is. up. Yeah. Oh, dude, I got to go. You know, I was, some of my, some, some mornings my call time was like, I think my earliest call time was 340. Ah! I'm like, 340? Hold me Yeah. Party. Just stay up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At that point, you're like, damn, you know. But, they have to paint you, they have to paint you every single day or no? No, it, like, for the first, for the first run of it, just because they were like, so they kept my call times early just because they, they were trying to get it down. But once they got it, you know, get the groove of like how the tattoos were going to sit and right. how much, you know, they needed to use and how my skin was going to react to it, all that shit. So the first week was like, fuck, man, it was just like 4 a.m. call times. And then, but after that, they're like, okay, now we got the hang of it. We know how your skin is right. and all that shit. And so, you know, I would, you know, most of my call times are 5, 5.30. Ugh. You know. Was this your first series or no? Have you been a regular on something else? I, I was a regular on a, a show called My Roommate, My Friend, or it, it's a sketch group I'm in called The Dress Up Gang. I know The Dress Up Gang. I've yeah, seen, yeah. I've so seen we had a show yeah. on TBS, um, and I was a regular on that. And so that was, but that was my first time being a regular on a show. And then after that, I was just all cameos and doing. Right. So, but then this one was like. That's yeah, huge, yeah. man. I think it's great. I think it's amazing, man. Especially to be on a show that's good. That's a hard thing, man. Sometimes you get on a show and it's. Yeah, yeah. No bueno. It's, I've done them. I've done a lot of bad shows. Yeah. 
I like I've done I don't want to see anything. I've done some homie. bad shows. <laughs> but it happens, Stop, man. You hey, get, but you're always you're always odd, won't we? You, you try well, you try, you try to keep hitting, man. You try you swing as hard as you can. Oh man, but Dave's so good, dude. Yeah. Hey, thanks, like, man. I appreciate it. I was pumped to see you on there. But yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's like you said, like I'm always grateful for any work because work is work and we're all, you yeah. know, trying to make it in this thing. And and then so but when you're on something that's like boom, especially with this full, it's like, and it's so close to home. It's my family. It's everything. It's how right. I grew up. It's like bam, it was so just fun to do, and it was like super important that it felt authentic, you know? Because we see a lot of our shit on TV. It's like ah, oh, you almost had it, or you could tell like there was some hands in there that maybe didn't don't mm-hmm. know what's up. Mm-hmm. This one, it was like you, you know, don't have other than other than uh, some of the whites that you named that are helping to put it together. No whites <laughs> in the writers' room, right? Uh, there's some white. There's always gonna be whites in the writers' room. Why? Come on, Kick them out, yeah. dude. Yeah. Kick out the whites, dude. Have have just all brown. Have all brown in the writers' room. Oh, we can't it, have that. Then it will go to shit. I, I guess. <laughs> Glasses. <laughs> you can't have all brown, bro. Yeah, hey, come on, let's be real here, homie. Yeah. No, but it is funny to think like on that show. Like it's like it, it's so LA centric. So you're like, this is so. It's so. It's so direct. It's so literal of what you're talking about, right? Like it's not. There's no other way that you could kind of tell that story unless you, someone has lived that story. That that's what helped the most. Like you grew, did Estrada grow up in L.A. South Central. I mean, so, so you know the show's loosely based off his life. Okay. So and then you know, it, so it was super important to him that it was authentic. But even the whites that were on set or the producers and writers, they did a really good job. It was the first time I seen it actually, where they're constantly checking in to be like, hey. It, it, does this is this legit right here? Is this legit? Right. Or how would you say this? Or do, would you like that's legit? You know, like you know, they were like that's good though. You need to have that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was cool because all, all the other experiences I had was like, yeah, okay, let's go and da, da, right. you know, I just want to get the shot done and keep moving. When through. you guys want to talk shit about some of the whites, do you guys start speaking Spanish to each other? Oh, to talk? Yeah, it's on, so man. funny. Well, you gotta hide yeah. behind the whites and let it. And then they're like, "What are you guys talking about?" And you're like, "Just the scene." Yeah, we say it with like smiley. <laughs> you know? Yo, that's gotta be so fucking. Fun. That's so fun, man. And then, and then uh, the girl, the young lady that plays uh, his. Uh, oh, Michelle, his yeah. girl Maggie. What, I don't her even want to. I don't even want to say what it is. Her but whatever. Maggie. Yeah, yeah. Maggie. Yeah, she's great too. Yeah, the Michelle show, Ortiz. Yeah, the show is great. fitted with a lot of really, really talented people. So you can tell right away what's hard about TV nowadays is like sometimes they'll get a one or two people right, and there's five other people on the show that you're like, I don't know who that, how they fit into the thing. You mm-hmm. know, like it just doesn't grab right or whatever. But you guys really did it right, and it's so funny because. I'm from Chicago and I moved to LA 20 years ago and like living within the culture a little bit for a little while. I mean, that's my name Cheeto that people call me. Yeah, yeah. It's because I used to play in a fucking... Uh, a, this pickup game with all these Mexican dudes, and they would they would call me Cheeto. That's where that <laughs> yeah, came from. Yeah, you got orange leg hair, dog. That's where that's <laughs> literally where that came from. They're like fucking Cheeto <laughs> dust, man. Look at Cheeto legs, eh? <laughs> so that that like like soaking up part of that culture was just so wild to me because as a kid. You know, it was mostly black and white that I knew in Chicago. Mm-hmm. I knew some, like I knew some, there wasn't, it, there was some Mexican or some, you know, uh, Dominicans or Cuban, like some, but not like it is out here, obviously. Yeah, but yeah. coming out here and, and seeing the culture of it and like watching it come to fruition on TV for you guys, it was great. Because I was like, this is kind of the closest version I had seen, even as an outsider of being like, this feels r- as real and funny as it can be. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? But that Thank is, you, man. is part you. of that shit. His life in terms of him trying to do start the because there, there was a there was a thing called Homeboy Industries here in Los Angeles where it's reformed yeah, yeah. gang. Is that kind of what it's based on a little bit or no? It's yeah. I mean, you know, there's a lot of like those. There's a handful of those places. Homeboy Industries is obviously the biggest, they're the biggest one. one. Yeah, they're like super. They're st- they're killing it to this day. Yeah, and it's a great. It's a, a amazing place. Homeboy, yeah, you know? yeah. Like, I got a lot of friends there, a lot of homies, and and. Um, you know, they're just constantly killing it. Father Greg Boyle, you know, he's that's one right. Of the the founders. Father Greg, right? He's the founder. That's right. Yeah, and he was like, yeah, but uh, you know, just coming from you know the writers and stuff like that, it wasn't. It's not based off like Homeboy Industries, and right? That, you know, I don't want to ruin you know the the ending of the. Series, I know. I don't want to say anything. You know, don't say anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's but it's but like Chris, you know, we went in there to you know, and Chris went into a. Uh, to meet with those guys, the homeboy industries and oh, all really? that and, you know, touch base with them and, you know, just kind of made sure, you know, it was like, hey, you know, just to show show love and respect and all that stuff. And then some of the, 
they're involved in in some of this uh, some of the stuff like uh like when we launched the show we they they put like these like merch packets together where you know they they were contracted to to like you know homeboy people from homeboy industries were delivering stuff you oh know? that's dope like with their along with their stuff they would right. you know if somebody wanted to order like a this full or a hugs not thugs mug or like a this, oh, that's this great mug, dude it would get delivered by homeboy industries oh <laughs> wow and Jamar neighbors is on it too who I love Jamar oh, yeah, is yeah. wild man Jamar is one of those guys where uh um he is a beautifully soft sweet soul but also could kill you because so fucking strong. Could, oh, dude, could, he could rip your torso me. from your body. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's so jacked. It's when he, <laughs> yeah. sometimes he comes to the store and he just takes his shirt off and I'm just like, this motherfucker is He's the ripped, most cut me. dude I've yeah. ever seen in my life. But he plays that character on the show so well too about oh, like so being in control good, but also so being like good. a sweetheart, man. So you grew up in LA. You t- We talked a little bit before the show. You grew up in LA and then um, Chris grew up South Central. You grew up out. You grew up. Yeah, out, I grew right? up. Well, I grew up in Ventura County. Well, I was born in San Fernando. Lived here when I was little. Or Valley boy. This way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then we moved to Ventura County. So, which is like, uh, you know, Oxnard. Most of my family lives in Oxnard, uh, Camarillo, Ventura, that that area. But there's like, it's mostly like, my memories are strawberry fields, homie. You know, so that's all strawberry like, fields out there, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so you know, my mom used to pick strawberries. My dad would pack lemons on trains. Like, wow, it was like a agriculture thing, you know. Well, because that's all so, that's up that way, right? It's mostly it's all it's all like migrant workers and yeah. And then because once you get past there, you're almost in middle California, mid you know what do they call it? Like Bakersfield and all that shit and out that way. Oh, like, you go east, yeah, east, yeah, 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 central and all that. Yeah, but you know, going past that, you're start start to Santa Barbara and all. Yeah, that yeah, shit, yeah. But but uh, so wait, your parents both grew up. Uh, what well, you were growing up? I mean, your parents are both working packing and working and stuff like yeah that. and then you know but they started moving on up my dad uh learned how to be a carpenter and real chill dude but always always had a low rider always chuck taylor's dickies my dad was old school like that you know still still you know where's he from like, auctioner he's yeah. born and raised in born and raised yeah wow. we, ha- we have family in the in the valley but they he was working out in the valley a lot and then uh so they moved they moved here and then that's when they had me right you know in uh san fernando and uh when'd you start doing stand-up oof Oh, uh, 2005. Did you go to college? Did you go to school? Did you go to college? Yeah, yeah. San Francisco you State. You went to SF State. Yep. And that's I where I started doing comedy in San Francisco. So that's why, like, a lot of the LA homies, they always thought, like, like all oh, the dude from San Francisco. But I was like, no, nah, homie, I'm from down here. But that's where I started doing stand up. Right. So it was like, but uh, yeah, yeah. I loved San Francisco, that whole scene. It was a great place to hone the craft. You know, you get a lot of stage time there and stuff like that. And, I was going to say, there's a lot of, there. I mean, even before I even started going up there to do shows, when I would go to visit, I would hear about a lot of comics that I was, you know, because I was always so interested before I even jumped in. And I, there was a million places that people could get up out there. I mean, it was so Oh, wild. yeah, it was good. It was way more than down here. You could be like a few months in and then you can get like, you know, seven, eight minutes, 10 minutes. Yeah. And you're like, you know, here it's Not like, down here. Yeah, no. <laughs> you wasn't pay five bucks to get three minutes, homie. <laughs> you pay five bucks to get three minutes and you got to drive a half an hour to go get some to some shitty bar in Orange County. I did so many of those fucking things where I just drive for an hour and a half to, oh, hour homie. to uh, do five minutes and then go home more sad and more broke than you were when you first fucking left. Yeah, you know? yeah. Ah, oh, you got to pay your dues, man. But yeah, I remember, oh man, doing some of those rooms, driving all far, like you said, mm. to some noisy ass bar. Doesn't even shitty like, ass yeah, bar, and they don't want you there. There's yeah, a TV yeah. on. In here, we pour whiskey. whiskey. This episode of Whiskey Ginger is brought to you by Rabbit Hole Distillery and their one of a kind Kentucky bourbon and rye whiskeys. What I love about these cats, I've been talking about them for a while now. I love Rabbit Hole. I love jumping on the hole with them. Each of their bourbons are made from distinct one of a kind recipes using specially malted grains that you won't find anywhere else, baby. Also, a lot of people are talking about small batch. That can mean a thousand barrels. Who knows? Rabbit Hole does extreme small batch. It means under 15 barrels. Under 15 barrels. They could fit in this room that I'm in right now. That's pretty impressive. You know the quality is going to be there in every single bottle. And a lot of people are talking about toasted barrels and all that jazz. Every single one of Rabbit Hole's four expressions is aged in both charred and toasted barrels, baby. You're going to get the flavor that you've always wanted, and it's never chill filtered, just as it should be. Just as it should be, rabbit hole. This stuff is great. You can find it at any store near you. I've been drinking the High Gold. I like this stuff. I was stuck on the Cave Hill for a while, which is also another good one, but High Gold is my new favorite. Uh, They also have this uh, finished in sherry casks. If you like the Derringer, if you like to feel more risque, a little bit of 1920s, sherry casks. I don't know what I'm talking about, but try one of their four expressions, Cave Hill, High Gold, Boxer Grail, or Derringer. 
You can go grab them at any liquor store near you. You can go to rabbitholedistillery.com and find a map of where they sell it in your neighborhood. In the meantime, go to rabbitholedistillery.com slash drizzly to get a little delivery and use promo code rabbit for $5 off your first order. Once again, that's rabbitholedistillery.com slash drizzly. Use that promo code rabbit for $5 off your first order. Drink responsibly. Hey, I've talked to you guys about Squarespace a bunch. I created my site with Squarespace over the years. I've done multiple different sites with them. And if I can do it, you can do it because I'm a stupid person. Let me tell you something. It's easily laid out. All you got to do is use the templates that they prearranged for you. Or you can go rogue. Like I've said, you can do it your own way. I've asked a lot of people, and we featured uh, websites on the show. Send your site if you built it with Squarespace, particularly using our code, please. Send them to amasantinofan at gmail.com. We might feature your site on the show. We've done it a bunch, and you may be next. Squarespace is the place to create a great site. They got member areas, which I love. They make it easy for creators to monetize all your content. Uh, And look, Squarespace is for everybody, whether you're a comic promoting dates, you're a personal trainer, you're a chef, you're an artist, you just love ranting, okay? Squarespace is a great place to build a site. You can do appointment scheduling on there if you do here, and you got to get your hair calendar done. Also, it's got a video studio. Create pro-level videos effortlessly. Squarespace Video Studio helps you uh, make and share engaging videos uh, for your audience. Email campaigns, blast it out. Let people know where you are, where you're going, where you've been, and what's going on in your life. Connect all your social media accounts to one little spot, which I love very much. Condense it, baby. And the analytics. This is probably the biggest thing that we use. Uh, Insights to grow your business. Uh, Learn where your site visits and clicks and sales are coming from so you can, you know, uh, predictably find out where people are clicking and where you can do the most uh, business, like me going to Boston on New Year's Eve. That's because we use the analytics to find out who wants to come see me live on New Year's Eve in Boston. Uh, it is great. If you're looking to build a site, all you got to do is head to squarespace.com slash whiskey for a free trial. Squarespace.com slash whiskey. When you're ready to launch, use the offer code whiskey to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Ginger. I like gingers. Sucks, bro. And now, you, so now you're, now you're touring though a little bit. Are you on tour now or no? Yeah, yeah. On you're on the now. road, man. Yep. Where, yep. You, where, where, where have you been going to? And like, what are you selling? You think you're selling more tickets now because of the show? Like, is it working? For sure. That's so great, man. For sure. Oh, man. It's and fucking that's, awesome. That's kind of how we're gauging, uh, you know, how well the show's doing. It's just like around, just walking around town and people showing love and, you know, they'll still call me Creeper, but they're like, Creeper, hey, love the new show, homie, you know? And I'm like, oh, so, so. That's you know? great, man. <laughs> now they know what I look like without the brocha, the bandana, you know? <laughs> like, you know what Clark Kane looks like now, you know? Well, you know, <laughs> he has to reveal, man, yeah, at some yeah. point, right? You have to come out of the phone booth, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so funny, though. That, that do you Now, do you still ever tour as Creeper or only just as you? No, no, yeah, I do the characters, homie. Yeah, you do? I you do. do. I do stand up. So my show is like, I'll do like, I do four different characters and then I do myself. Uh, but I do like 20 minutes of myself. 20 minutes is creeper to close. You know, and then I do Juanita, Carmelita, and uh, mm-hmm. Pachanga. It was like this party guy because I used to dance Palais Folklorico back in the day, which is like Mexican folk dancing. So I sell my boots with the nails in them. No shit. You know, I'll go out there and do like this party guy, <laughs> but use like legit moves. I'll be like, hey, I, you know, yeah. Wait, you, so, do, you used to do that years ago? When, yeah. When did you stop doing it? Tour. Normally you stop like when you're like in high school or something, but I just kept going, you know? I did. <laughs> Why? You loved it, bro. <laughs> I loved it. You okay. loved it. At first I was like, oh man, I don't know if I want to do this. And then I stayed in it because I liked a girl in there. That was That's in there. what yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. I was going to say, what is it, bro? It's either money or a girl. Yeah, yeah. It's either like they were paying me to do it and I just enjoyed it. Or it was like, there was a female I couldn't get out, man. <laughs> Did you ever get with her? Yeah, yeah, we did. It we worked. Know, you know, so, 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 you know. It worked out. <laughs> see, click, 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 click. I was like, man, I just do stupid shit with girl shit. I mean, I guess we all did, but yeah. Oh, I even God. went through my little wannabe cholo stage, and I was like, it was. I wanted to be down too. So I want to fit on my cousin, but it was because of a girl too. It was like a chola I wanted to holler at, mm. and then she wasn't. She would be like, this fool, you know. I'm wearing like my little bullshit ass shit or whatever, and then. You know, and then I got my my pair of dickies on me and my white mm-hmm. tee. And she was like, oh, you know, hey, what's it was up? working. And I was like, yeah, what's up? You know, like, I'm down. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then I got my ass beat. And I was like, nah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, I went back to cargo shorts and bugle boy jeans. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> that is so funny, man, this stuff. We'll, we'll look so stupid for a woman. We, we just will do anything to, like, because you want, you so badly want to show off. And you don't know they don't want that. But you think, I got to do something to impress them somehow. Yeah, so whatever yeah. I got to change, I'll like, you know, go out of my way to look dumb or do the thing that I think might be the thing that they'll like. They don't like that shit anyway. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. A cholo would scare me. A cholo fucking 
so sexy, but also like afraid she beat the shit out of me. You know? Oh yeah, they'll they'll, they'll cut a motherfucker. Fuck you sure. up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's afraid. Yeah, <laughs> but they're so so sexy too, man. Yeah, yeah, it's like exciting. You know? Yeah, it is. Right? Am, am I gonna get beat up today? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's that is it is it is funny that you'll we will stay in stuff just because you're you know what I mean <laughs> just because for for a girl. I'm like picturing you with a chola right now. Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm being ginger. What's that? You know? My little rojo. My little yeah, rojo my boy. Rojo. Yeah. My little rojo You're boy. Like, oh, okay, baby. What do you need? I'm like, hey, <laughs> Maria. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a, yeah. I should be, you know what? Tell those guys. I'll, I should come to the, uh, the white... Uh, the white redheaded dude that's dating one of the new cholos in the neighborhood. I'll oh, do yeah. that next season. I'll come by and fuck <laughs> with you guys. <laughs> hey, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Here comes Cheeto legs, dog. Yeah. Here comes Cheeto. Be careful, yeah. man. The craziest motherfucker in town. <laughs> no, but uh, but it is it is funny. We'll do some like dumb lame shit for women. Our whole your your whole life. Are you you are you are you married or any of that shit? No. Oh, single man. I got a no. I got a girl. Yeah. Oh, you do. Well, okay. well, yeah. I'm trying to. Yeah. I got it. Fix it. I yeah. got you. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> well, fucking put some drywall. Wait, no, on that I got shit. a I got a girl. Like she's she's the one for sure. She's yeah. the one without a doubt, huh? Yeah. yeah Look at for that, sure, man. Homie. But, That's yeah. fucking great. See now you get on TV again. You, the money is good. Now you gotta you gonna lock it up. Be a dad. You want to be a dad? I don't know, homie. You know, yeah, I'm knows. 42 now. It's like, shh. I got my goddaughter, Frankie. She's she's cool as hell. Uh, 42 is young, dude. I just read this thing about some actress, some super famous actress is like 48. She's having twins. Who did I just read? Oh yeah, yeah. I heard something about I that. I can't remember. I and the, and the father's like old too. Yeah, right? he's like 50. Or, or I wait, say I, old, but yeah, no, you can. But to have kids, though. No, I, I can't remember who it was, but she was like um, old ass, uh, old ass <laughs> actress, <laughs> forty eight. <laughs> No, but look, it said, uh, 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 no, it's not going to, no, I'm, it's typing it in the wrong, no, it's coming out the wrong. Hillary Swank, there it is. Oh, yeah, oh, dang. 48, and she's having twins. See what I'm saying? That's yeah. crazy, and this this website I just opened up, you know the thing now, every time you open up a website and it says, like, do you accept the cookies or whatever the fuck? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now it just said, it said, accept cookies, and the thing above it said, do not sell my data. It's so funny, they're, like, telling you, like, we're selling your shit. If you say yes, we're going to sell all your yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the scariest future there is now. I mean, but that out. shit was already happening, but now they're like, oh, now, they now have we have to you. let you know. But it's mm-hmm. like, that's what you were doing this whole time. <laughs> yeah. You, know? you, want yeah. A, you want technology. We're making you know, a lot of money it. on it too. <laughs> that is the craziest shit with it. We, you're, yeah, you are subject to the thing. That's why when someone's like, why would you give them that kind of information? It's like, dude, they have everything. Like I did, I did, because we travel so much. I did, um... Uh, clear and pre-check and all that bullshit. Oh yeah, yeah, I got all that. And shit. then people were like, "Wow, that's so stupid. Why would you?" Get? It's like, what you think they don't know anything? Yeah. What the fuck do you think Homie, that they don't got, know? Yeah. It's, if you got a phone, if you ever have an email, they got all your it's over. shit. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a driver's license? They got you. Yeah. Like now, when you travel, they got to make you. They're trying to make everyone get that thing, that real ID. Do you know what that is? Oh, I got it. Yeah. Oh, you already got it. Yeah, I got the real ID, TSA pre-check. Damn. Or, the real ID to me, I didn't like you. Did you? You had to go back in to go get an. It's like a second driver's license, right? Well, yeah. I I kind of. I was re-upping my license anyway, so I'm And they like, give oh. it to you, yeah. Yeah. See, I don't, I, that's my whole thing is like, it's another piece of bullshit. I'm like, why do I need it? Can't you just have an electronic version of this bullshit now? Exactly. Oh, Scan man. my eyeballs, bro. It's, it's just over. a hustle because, you know, you have to pay extra to make it a real ID. Right, 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 and right. it's like, you know, if you, ca- you do the, I'm, you know, I was talking about calculations earlier. I'm not that good at it, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> it's a lot of money. Only if you're Seems like a lot of money. You need this to travel now. It's like, oh, fuck, all right. I think about that sometimes. I'll get in my head when like, whenever I go back, whenever I go to New York, uh, and you'll see, like, if you cross the bridge and how much money it costs to, like, you know, for people to go in and out of the city. And I'm always like, how many fucking people are doing, how much money? They're making millions of dollars a day just by people going in and out of the city. Yeah. You don't even think about it because you're like, oh, I have to pay it. I don't have a choice. But it's like, where's all that fucking money going? Where right. the fuck is all this money? Like, who's, who is getting all this money? Like, yeah. whenever I think about that, whenever I, like, I pay taxes or any of that bullshit, I'm always like, who's making all this fucking money? Where the fuck is this going? Who's the dude that, go, that gets your money and goes, all right. I know what to do with this shit. Yeah, yeah. You know? And they uh-huh. blow it and ruin it. I know just the thing. I know just the thing. Looking at a property in Palm Springs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're buying houses on our ass. <laughs> That's the big hit, right? Like, look, you know, not to not to talk too dirty about it, but like you get when you get a good TV show, you get a nice check, right? And then you see yeah. what they take from you. And because the first yeah, time I ever got a show. Oh, now it's like a whole different ballgame. Now oh. you're like, 
I'll see like an article on a bill that's passing and it's like, and I'm like, oh, shit. Okay. You become a Republican now overnight, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm still about one love. Well, we gotta give but it's fun, so but funny though. Like, you do, you're like, wait, why, 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 why are they taking more money? Exactly. You, you, it just makes you pay attention a little bit more. You know what I'm yeah, saying? A little more, more money already you make. paid attention, but you know how to be like. The more you make, the more you pay more attention to it. Yeah. But it's like, yeah. For the longest time, most comics, right? Like you, you, you come from humble beginnings. Like I, I moved out here with no money and yeah. You know, for a long time, I was broke, broke. And, and not to say it was any harder because I wasn't from here, but like I wasn't, there was no home for me here. So oh, it was yeah, tough. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of was like had to figure. It I was the able fuck to couch surf with like family. And well, all see, that's that great. Shit. I'm jealous of that, man. You know, like I couch yeah. surf with friends or we would meet people, but it was so tough to be so broke for so long that like when you get a little bit of love in comedy, especially comedians, you're like, holy shit, they're gonna pay me to do this thing. Yeah, you know what I mean. You're like, holy Tough. fuck, they're gonna pay me to be. A I remember the first time I got twenty dollars and two free drinks. I was like, here we go, baby. It's Ballin! happening. <laughs> Spent it that night. <laughs> I do, I do. It is kind of wild to think that, like, because then you get, if you get a little bit further along in the game, it is funny how y your perspective shifts of, like, I just got all this stuff, man. You're going to take it. They're going to grab it from me. Dude. It is kind of wild. And I'm like, when I get hit with that tax bill where you see how much taxes they take, you're like, what the? You, I was like, you can't factor in the fucking last 15 years I was broke as fuck. <laughs> yeah, homie. yeah. Like, Don't I, I get some leeway? 35 from the old years days? old sleeping on my homie's couch. You can't factor in that shit when I'm there <laughs> crying myself to sleep every night talking about, oh, I'm going to make it in comedy one day. Like, come on, homie. Like, <laughs> give me the leeway. The ba Give yeah, me back taxes yeah. like, on nope, that. That matter, should be back homie. taxes. <laughs> did, your parent, did your parents, when you told them you wanted to do this shit, were they, were they all about it? Oh, yeah. They're the reason I did it. They always had stand-up on the house. Like, dude, date. so my dad was 16, borrowed his sister's car, and my mom was 14. They went on their first date, right? right? They're still fucking together. One of their, they love old, they all love old school funk music. They would go to that shit. My sister's name is Tina Marie after Tina Marie. No they way. went to Rick James's funeral. They're like about the, it's like the religion. Wow. And then stand-up. And they were, they would always have it on in the house. And when they were dating, they would go to the, the improv, the store, you know, drink in the parking lot and get drink, have their two sodas for their Damn. two drink minimum. And man, they would tell me they got stories, man. Bro. So when your dad is six, how, when did your dad have you at 16 or 17? How old was your dad when he no, had No, no, no. My dad was, uh, I think my dad was like 20, 21. And then my mom was probably like eight, 17, 18. Eight, 17, yeah, like yeah. That, yeah. But you're still, your parents are still young. I mean, that fucking, that's wild, man. That's yeah, yeah. Young. That's great. It's crazy. Now we're just like homies, your you friends. know, because I'm 42 and my mom, you know, my mom's like, what, well, how, you know, they're just, we're like closer in age now as you yeah. get older. You it know? is funny so how like, much closer you become as you get older. So what was the stand up that, that was around when you were a kid? Like, what did they like the most? Oh, man. I mean, it was fun. Even when I was a kid, man, they would let me watch Eddie Murphy. Hell yeah. Richard Pryor, George Carlin. Paul Rodriguez was the first dude I saw that looked like me on there. Um, you know, my mom really loved Louis Anderson. Was uh, Lopez big in the house? Yeah, when he came, but I was already, you know, when 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 George popped, it was I was in uh I was living in San Francisco at the time already, yeah. you know, because he was that, that's when he dropped the Why You Crying special. I already kind of knew who he was, kind of, because I was already kind of following stand up. Right. But when he dropped that Why You Crying special, gosh damn, homie, I remember just I was jumping up and down by myself in the living room, just like. Fuck, because prior, because it's just funny to say that, like prior to him, like there wasn't a lot of like, you know, Freddie Prince was way ahead of our time. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he died in like the seventies. Did he kill himself? Seventies or eighties? Maybe yeah, it was the eighties. I think it was late seventies, early. And then, and then a lot of there was a big 70s, gap for commercial, like any sort of Latin comedian at all until yeah. You know, really until the, like, the 90s started to like pop around and then guys would come through and then, yeah, P-Rod, Paul, Paul's, uh, P-Rod's dad, Paul Rodriguez, like yeah. he kind of became the biggest of that, of that fucking crew. Oh, you know? for sure, man. And then since it's all, it's been, you know, obviously there's way more, but it is so funny because that's, there wasn't a ton of them. For you to say that that was the first person you saw look like you on TV, that is kind of strange, huh? Because yeah. before that you didn't see any of that shit ever. No, it was like there was crazy. no representation of it whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, it no, is weird wild, though; man. there wasn't in comedy, especially. But now, I mean, it's a different world, you know. And you guys are the ones like I know this sounds really corny, but it's like it's great to see like, you know, this fool is cracks the mold for those things to continue for other comics to be like, yo, that's like me. I look like that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? That's that's kind of what I think is so beautiful about it is that as the business grows and changes and ex expands and puts on great stories with good creators, then you're like, it does show a little, you know, like a, a little fucking Mexican kid in LA who wants to be a comedian is like, oh shit, something looks like me on TV. Yeah, Instead yeah. of, 
you know, another fucking sitcom of two guys, a girl in a pizza place or whatever the fuck, whatever, <laughs> yeah, just, whatever uh, they call that shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're late again, you know, but it is, you're but, late again. You're late again, Marcy. <laughs> no, but it is, but it is kind of cool because it's, you know, like around my, my house, kind of the opposite. Like my parents weren't in, into stand up. Comedy was kind of like my secret little dirty love. Like Ooh. I was embarrassed to tell them I wanted to do stand up. Oh shit. Because it was just, I just thought it was, you know, I thought that they would be like, that's a fucking stupid, that's fake. Get a real job. Right, right, you know? right. Yeah, yeah. So I was so scared for years. And then I've, when I finally admitted to them, you know, I, I could have easily told them I wanted to act. Like that was more plausible for, for, for them in their mind. But when I finally admitted, they were like, we know. I was like, oh, you, oh, oh really? Shit. They're like, yeah, okay. we knew. What the fuck? You're always a, you were a fucking little asshole, goofball. I was just scared to say it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard, man. It's a weird thing. Even today, we talk to people about, you know, when someone who doesn't know you, and then you meet someone, you're like, oh, I do, I'm a comedian, da, 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 and they're like, oh, you're a comedian. Yeah. Immediately, they make you feel less than because you're, because our job, for some reason, seems fake. Or Right, right, right. You know exactly. I mean? you're like, oh, and, then, oh. and then all of a sudden... You're on a hit TV show. And oh, you're like, on TV. Then they're like, I'm a yeah, comedian. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, oh, wow. Oh, yeah. You're a real comedian. Yeah. yeah. On TV and yeah, everything. Yeah. I so love when, Where I can love I see somebody... your stuff at? Oh, no, it's on Hulu. Called show called and they go, no, I don't know it. I don't yeah. have Hulu. <laughs> I like when they go. Like, uh, who has Hulu? <laughs> I like when they go, I, I, you know, I, I've never seen your stuff. And you're like, okay. Yeah, yeah. You're like, cool, man. I'm going to be just fine. Yeah, what the <laughs> fuck? Yeah. That. What do you want me to say? That? I've never seen, I, you know, I've never heard of your stuff. I've never even seen any of your stuff. Yeah. And then they name, who when they when somebody who doesn't know you do comedy and they name a comic, you know, and they go, you know who I'd like? Or they name a comic? Who do they do, do, who do, they do to you? When they say like, like I hear a lot of times someone will go, uh, oh, you're a stand-up, yeah? And they'll go, you know Sebastian? Like people, if they fucking love Sebastian. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, go, you know Sebastian? Go, yeah, I know fucking <laughs> Sebastian. Like they do that to you, and they're like, you know, uh, you know this guy. And you're like, yeah, no, yeah. I know, I know the guy. I know who that is. Yeah, yeah, they, like, oh yeah, yeah, I get that all the time, man. No, you like him? You're like, yeah, man. Yeah, like, yeah, we're cool, you know. But there's yeah, nothing yeah. else to say. It's so strange. Yeah, it's like, all right, where are you going with this? Yeah. They're like, what do you want me to fucking say? You want me to talk shit about him? It's like, what, what, what would you be looking for to be like? Oh, I fucking hate that guy. Hey. No, but I, I they, it, they do always want to like, uh, it, it, that vibe always is what scared me into admitting that I wanted to do stand up. Like, do you know? Did you know you wanted to act, or that was that kind of like a second came second? It, stand up was my first love, and then you know, I, in my stand up, I storytell and do voices, kind of already. So yeah. I was like, and then you know, it led into the character work, and then you know that stuff went viral, and then it kind of led in there. You know, I was already filming sketches on my own and stuff like that, so I was kind of already don't, like developing that that skill or whatever. But but yeah, yeah, and then I took. You know, I was, was able to get like take some acting classes, get an acting coach, and stuff like that. Not oh, not too intense, but but just to help me kind of fine tune it. Because when it you like, first did acting coaching, when you first did coaching, <laughs> did, were, were you bugged out by it a little bit? Like when you first started doing it? Like oh, when I got one, yeah, yeah, yeah I felt weird. Wasn't it's me? weird as shit. Right? It's weird as shit. Huh? Yeah, having someone tell you how to t how to say yeah. stuff is weird. But it, it was it was funny. It was like, um, you know, uh, D Dave Chappelle. I asked him one time, like, because I've had an opportunity where I'd be, like, in some green rooms, and it's, a, where it's only, like, a few people or whatever. And I asked him one time, uh, I was like, hey, man, I was like, which was a stupid, like, it was a long time ago, so I wouldn't ask myself, but I was like, but, you know, he, he was being cool, and I was just like, man, just like, if you, if you had to drop just one advice, you know, to, like, to a, a dude, like, or whatever, like, up-and-comer or whatever, he's like, take acting classes. You know, is that it's, what he said? Yeah, it's a one. That's what he said. Wild. And then there's no way he's ever taken a fucking acting. Have you seen this motherfucker act? He's terrible. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> this dude is terrible. No, no, but that was his thing. He was like, yeah, he was, he, he was like, that's my piece of advice to you: take acting classes. He's like, man, I, you might not think you need them, but watch. And I was like, all right. Well, because he went to uh, he went to a, like a school for the arts. I think is where he went. Uh, oh, really? Shit, I don't even yeah, know. Yeah, I, I, I like, can't remember the name of it too. I just watched a little. He did like a little piece about it, but um. Oh, the anti-trans school for the arts, I think is what it was called. The anti- <laughs> That was it, yeah. <laughs> Pre prestigious. We're going to teach you about a lack of tolerance. Oh, <laughs> this fuck, dude. No, he's, no, he's fucking Chappelle, great dude. No, but honestly, that, I get that. that. I mean, that's a good piece of advice, too, because it's, you can't tell a comedian. There's no advice I to mean, give to a comic. Yeah, and with that being said, I wasn't... I mean, you know, even with the acting class and the acting coach, it was probably like six months worth of the rest. You know, I, I'm not like still actively doing You're like, it. I got to like, get out of this fucking shit. Yeah. It's just, you know. Me, 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 me,
As a comic, it's hard to not make fun of that stuff whenever you get involved. In yeah, it. Well, oh, homie, I, I had to like apologize for laughing. I would be like, like I'd be like, because it was it's funny, you know. Yeah, you have is. to do all that shit. Oh, yeah. you know, my yeah. mother, man, yeah. <laughs> all that shit. It's so hard to not be like, this is so dumb, dude. I gotta yeah, leave. Yeah. It, 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 look, and but it is, it is good. It is like. Uh, it's healthy for you. How, how does how do your parents feel now? Sorry, right. no, they're stoked. They're good. They're good. It's it, it, but they're not connected to this world whatsoever, right? Like they right. they live in Chicago. L. A. is like a fantasy town. It's fake. It's not real. It's it's weird to them. It's like they can't believe I'm still out here. But they're stoked for me. But also, you know, they're not connected to it, right? Okay. Like like just because we're not from here, like this is it's kind of wild. Like they're happy for me. They're proud, uh, but there still is like a, uh, that's crazy that you do that. You know, like yeah, yeah. it's still kind of fucking nuts. And it is, it is nuts. But, yeah, but, it, I mean, do anybody make it in this game, it's nuts. It's nuts, homie. It's but like, it is also weird because they don't, you know, it's it's so different from their lives. Like they live, my parents, you know, my old man's retired now. My mom's about to be retired and they work jobs their whole fucking lives and regular ass jobs. And so yeah. this is weird. I don't, yeah, come, like, you know, what? you meet a lot of get, people in this industry. They all came from their, their mother was an actor. Or their dad was a producer or, you know, like right, my right, uncle's right. a director. No, we came yeah. from a bunch of fucking firefighters, cops and, yeah. and, and, and sales people are, you Blue know what I mean? Blue as fuck. Yeah. Oh, it's just kind of, we came from, so, so this is weird as fuck. It's right, weird. Right. They're proud, but it's weird as fuck. There's no doubt. Right. You know, they'll always have those comments where they're like, uh, we didn't really like that one that much, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's like, okay, I don't, I, I get it. But they're like, no, 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 you're, you're very, you know, it's, you did good, but the th I didn't like the, you know, like I did this fucking Kevin Hart movie and my parents were like, you were funny. I, we did not like the movie at all. And I was like, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, like, oh I, was like, I was like, I get it. It's all good. But that's kind of the vibe that they have. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah. You're, I mean, your parents are proud as fuck, huh? Oh yeah, they're pumped on me. I mean, there, I mean, there was definitely like you know, because it's a marathon, you know, making it. And, yeah. and so it was like there was definitely a while where they were like, "Come on, man! Like you got to get a real job or like, like you know, we're not saying like give up your dreams, but come on." But they were, they were like, they were saying give up your fucking dream. Yeah, I mean, were they? Were I they don't blame you them. Out or shit, or? I mean, it's a narrow road to. Make it is. It. There's a lot of people trying to make it in this shit, you know. But I was like, like it. If there's anybody that's gonna believe in you, it's gotta be you, you know. So that's it. even though I felt like a piece of shit, my self esteem was at an all time low, and I'm in my 30s sleeping on my homie's couch, you know. He was like, you know, he, he was charging me 200 bucks a month to sleep on his couch, and I was like, all right, cool. That's Good all deal. I had to come up with: pay my cell phone bill, pay that 200 bucks, and I was doing stand up, you know. Yeah. But it's like, fuck, man, I couldn't invite girls back. I couldn't do none of that shit. I was just like, all right, this, this is my life, you know. But deep down, I always knew I was like, "This, this is why you're here," you know. Which it sounds cheesy. No, it's not. But I'm man. like, "This it's is real. why the fuck God put me on this fucking planet, or whatever you want to say." Because that's I never doubted that. Even though I was insecure in a lot of other ways, that was one thing I was like, "Nah, homie, this is it. This is what you're here for." I think that's fine. And that, I just that, that's the yeah. mentality you have to have, right? Like otherwise, it just stops and it goes away. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm sure you started with a bunch of people that aren't around anymore. I started with people that just don't do it anymore. It's just yeah, too yeah, hard. yeah. Because I mean, sleeping on the couch for a while. It's, tough yeah did you have a day job you have a shitty day job for a while too yeah i was like man i worked at a hardware store and then i worked at a, a shipping and receiving job doing pallets and all that shit that's when i when i started doing stand-up and then and then um i was uh you know busting tables and then when the whole like postmates food delivery doordash thing started i started doing that mm -hmm. i had to get like my fucking whatever dui possession charge like drop so i had to come up with money to pay the pay the pay the court fees to get my shit expunged so I could deliver food. Such bullshit. Gosh damn, homie. It was just like fuck. When, when did you get a DUI? How long ago? Long time? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. It was uh it's been about 10 years or something, but but you know, after five years you can pay to like get it expunged if you haven't fucked fucked around anymore. You know? Right. So Which is such bullshit. What a racket. Yeah. You're like, we'll we'll erase it if you give us more money. Dude. And it was like they they I had like fucking cocaine and ecstasy on me, all this bullshit and uh Were you on shit? I was but I was driving cool. Like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> officer, I'm cool, dog. I was like, let me have a back room. Are was, you not cool, officer? Are dude, you not cool, man? <laughs> dude. The thing was is they pulled me over because my homegirl behind me was tailgating me. You know? So, mm. And so and, uh, so they knew it was something. Was I wasn't up. swerving nothing. I was cruising, homie. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm like, I got this. And then, uh, 
And uh, yeah, they pulled us over, and, and then I did the whole pedal, like, hey, you know, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, Z, mm-hmm. Y, whatever. And uh, but then my pupils are dilated. That's how he knew. And then they brought their little chart out with the little black circles, and they're like, "No, nah, look!" And they were having a moment between them, like they're like, "You think you know that?" They're like, this. and I'm like, "Dude, I'm fine. I'm fine." Only like da da da. Did they make you blow? Yeah. Yeah. So Sucks. once they got you there, it's over. But I blew. The thing was, is I blew. I wasn't. I wasn't. I only had like a couple cocktails. I was like right at the limit. Mm-hmm. And by the time they took my blood, because they had took my blood to the station, because my pupils were dilated, I was below the limit. So the DMV sent me my license right away. They didn't. All they cared about was the alcohol. They're like, oh no, he wasn't drunk. Boom. Met, my license was in the mail like that. But they saw. The, but the all the but other then shit once I the got charge. the court case, and they, you know, they're all that shit. They. Damn. But uh, those are expensive too. Would it clip you? It's like ten grand for all that shit, right, or something like that. Nah, but dude. So I have a homie that I grew up with. Bless his heart, homie. He was like the one dude in the crew. He was always wearing Dickies, the white tennies with the black laces, that little gangster look. Never mm-hmm. saw him with a book. A motherfucker was pulling like a four point one, four point two. Really? Went to UC Riverside. Graduated in four years. He's like, ah, I don't want to get a job yet, homie. I guess I'll go to grad school or law school or something. He goes to Loyola Law School, graduates in two years, takes a bar exam, passes it on his first try. This motherfucker's 23 years old, licensed Holy lawyer. shit. He, then nobody wanted to hire him. He looked like, you know, so he had to grow a beard and all this shit. But anyways, so I got the lawyer, homie. So he just <laughs> so like... It's wild. Yeah, he just like, he hooked me up, dog. And this, he, don't, he, he charges bread, but he, he hooked me up. And they lied on the, he found all these lies on the police report, asked for the video. They said I was swerving, broke the line. They had no proof of that. So he got the, he got like most of the charges dropped. He got it dropped all the way down to a wet and reckless. That's so like, wild. Yeah. They dropped the fucking possession shit. They That's dropped awesome. Fucking, yeah. I also love the idea of having a, <laughs> having a homie like that who's like undercover, a genius, <laughs> yeah. you know? Like, I guess I'll go to grad school. Yeah. Like it's an inconvenience. I want to get a job yet. I guess I'll go get you know, a law degree <laughs> real quick. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, my masters, whatever, man. Fucking snag one yeah, of those. Like, it's, it's a trip, man. That's great, though, man. What a good person to have in your fucking pocket. Oh, yeah, and he just, he's a fucking good dude, So man. he's just a natural genius, this fucking guy. Yeah, homie. And he's, he's just, just like, on accident. He's still always clowning and joking around. Like, if yeah. you met him and, like, kicked it with him, just, like, you would never even think, like... Would you say he had tattoos? Did he have tattoos up on his... Up on his face or in his neck, you were saying, or no? When you oh, say grew, no, no, no. When you say grew out a beard, I thought you were saying he was covering up. Oh no, no, no! It's just because he looks so young. Nobody oh, wanted to hire oh, him. Oh yeah, because they're he's like, what the fuck? You're gonna yeah. fucking, you're gonna That's defend me in court? And so he had to like grow a beard and be like, oh no, yeah, I'm gonna de- defend you. <laughs> 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 so now that you got it, now that you got that off your record, and we talked. I don't know if you, you know, I don't know if you care to talk about it, but you're no more sauce. We're not having any sauce on the show because you're cleaning out the sauce from your body, huh? Yeah, homie. That's good, man. It's good. It's good to take a break. It's good to take a long break, a short break, or forever break if you need it. I've I've said on the show multiple times, I like to have a couple of drinks. I have a lot of friends that are sober. I would say, I would actually say the majority of my friends are sober now. Like Like the percentage wise, I'd say over half are sober now. And for various different reasons, but you know, you got your, what did you say? How many times, how many days? You said you're wild. Uh, 37 days. 37 is pretty good, man. You know, know, keep it cruising. It's getting easier and easier, but yeah, yeah. You know, doing what we do, it's like, that shit's in your face. We work in bars. Comedy clubs and airports. Yeah, (laughs) man. Want to make it a double for an extra six dollars? You better believe I do. <laughs> Go get some more chicken wings for me, Marlene. <laughs> I know that feeling, especially when a flight gets delayed, and you're like, "What the yeah, fuck am like, I gonna do? Gonna get, Not yeah, drink we, in this airport?" That's so, like the Bert Kreischer theory. He has to get lit up before he gets on an airplane. He has to be drunk before he flies. Yeah, which yeah, I was yeah. never like that, but I did like to have a drink if it was on a long flight. If I was going to New York, I always wanted to have. a Oh drink. yeah, if I'm doing the East Coast, homie, come on, I gotta have a Xanax and a fucking shot. Oh, you gotta take a pill. Are you afraid of flying too? I just get anxiety in, mm-hmm. in like long flights. Short yeah. flights, I'm good. But when I'm there a long time, sometimes my mind will just go there and I'm like, fuck, me, fuck where am I going to go? Right. You know, where, like, can, where, where am would, I going to go? Yeah. <laughs> it would get, it, like I would be embarrassed sometimes. I remember one time I was having like a fucking panic attack. Though. I was like, fucking, I'm like breathing hard. And I'm like trying to hide it. Like I'm embarrassed. And the, even the homie next to me is like, hey man, you okay? You know, like. This older, this older white gentleman. You know, <laughs> yeah. One of mine. One of, <laughs> one of ours. One of people. One of ours, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so he was a... Uh, Mr. Mexican man, are yeah, you okay, yeah. sir? <laughs> Excuse me, little Mexican man. <laughs> <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> Ma'am, this brown person is struggling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This little Mexican man's having breathing problems. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but he, he was cool, man. And 
you know, he called the girl and they ordered or got me a drink actually, you know, and that helped. But like that now does it's like, help. Yeah. So now I'm like, fuck. But uh No more of that, dude. Now you gotta just focus on the brain. Just just yeah. let it sit. I got this, uh, you know, the doctor prescribed me like this non-narcotic fucking anti-anxiety thing. What's it called? Uh, Do you know what it is? I never pro heard. Pro Propanol or pro Propofol? Pro 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 propanol. Propanol. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 uh. uh. May cause side effects. Your eyes may fall out of your skull. Your dick might not work. You might grow hair in places you don't want. <laughs> That's the commercial for that shit. Yeah. Pro -pro 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 yeah. <laughs> Make cause diarrhea. Or shit. You might grow a hand out of your neck. And <laughs> I like how they try to make those things cool. They're like, I don't let anything get in my way. It's like, may cause blindness and <laughs> severe diarrhea. It's like, nothing's going to stop me now. Yeah. Um, now I'm free. I can have a normal life, the life I always wanted. I just want to have one interview yeah. with one dude that's like, listen, dude, I it's been bad. Uh, the side effects fucked me up. It helped a little bit, but also yeah, yeah. now at night, I dream of the devil murdering my whole family. So thanks, yeah. Propa Propa Fall. Like, it was cool, man, for about, you know, about th the first three weeks. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, I was having these weird dreams, and now I got a finger coming out of the back of my ear right here. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, I guess I'm okay. Other than yeah. that, uh, <laughs> I think it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, but now, now you got to fucking deal with uh, deal with traveling on the, around the country and just sit, and not have a drink, and just go to sleep. I guess that's the other thing I do too. If I just get get tired, yeah, get tired. Yeah, I've been I've been eating a lot more. That's for sure. But yeah, that's all right. That helps. It's aphrodisiac, you know. So uh, yeah, yeah, chicks yeah, love that shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> chicks love the little papusa. Um, okay, so how, do you have dates? Do you have dates coming up for the end of the year or no? Um, yeah, well. I don't know when this is going to be out for next, a while. Next week, next Friday. Okay, yeah, I got to go to Miami this weekend. Uh, Where are you next weekend? Oh, let me see. No, my, the, the next date I'll be at the Laugh Factory in Vegas, uh, October 21st and 22nd. Go see the boy. Las Vegas, if you're out there, go see my boy uh, at the Laugh Factory. How many shows are you doing? A lot of shows? Because they used to do like six or five or... Yeah, I'm not doing the whole week. Yeah, or, yeah, 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 they yeah. used to do that. I don't know. I think I'm doing... I'm just doing the two days. I think it's two shows each night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is Vegas going to get you? No, you're going to stay away from all the all the, all the danger? Yeah, you know, hey, homie, I'm, I'm riding this thing as long as I can. Right now, I'm getting up early and getting shit done, so... That's great, bro. I got There's a lot of my... A lot of deadlines, you know, that goes like on my plate right now. So I'm like, you know what? Fuck it, homie. Let me just... Yeah. You roll dice? Do you do, what do you, are you going to play anything in Vegas? Ah, fuck it, man. Homie, I get all emotional when I gamble. <laughs> you know, even if I lose like 500 bucks, which, you know, 500 bucks is a lot of money, but, you yeah. know, 500 bucks is like... Not the end of the world. It's, it's definitely not the end of the world it's now, you know. But still, but, you know, 500 you bucks, losing it. money, it's all good, but still, 500 bucks, 500 bucks. I mean, yeah, man. And I'll dwell on that shit. My mom always talks shit to me because my mom and dad love the slots. Like, they go with me to Vegas. They're coming with me to Vegas. Are they? Because we, we have our points, you know, we need to use them. <laughs> you know, my mom and my dad, yeah, mijo, we need to go. I like the uh, the... The, the dancing drums, mijo. Yeah, I play that one, you know? And I'm like, oh, okay, dad. Like, that's what's up, you know? Do they stay, are they staying in the same the spot? Drums. Where is the Where is the factory again? What hotel is uh, it? The uh, Tropicana. Trop, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, nah, they'll, they'll probably stay in a nicer hotel. They, they, they're they like, they give them free rooms, all that shit. They, do they go enough? They huh? bout those slots, homie. Damn. Yeah, yeah, no, no. They go like probably once every couple months. Oh, no, that's, that's, that's a lot. And they're going out there. They're going out there to see me this time. And then they're going back because Earth, Wind, and Fire has a residency at the Venetian, and uh, they're going back again for that. But are you they, know, they get the free buffet. They get the five hundred dollars slot play. Like they are in this shit. Yeah, they got the cards and the platinum cards. And they'll all stay up shit. all fucking night. You know? That's huge. I'm like, damn, how do y'all do that shit? Like, I was, even when I, when I was partying, I would be up all night, but I'm like, you know, I'm like, hey, this and that, and I would be yeah. going back to my hotel room, like, hey, oh, fuck, time to shut it down. We got to get some sleep, you know? You got to get some sleep on me. And then I look, and my mom and dad are right there, just still playing slots at <laughs> 7 in the morning, you know? And, you know, you're, you're okay? geeked out you're of your mind. You're much? just like, hey, yeah, yeah, man, I'm going to go uh, take a run around the yeah. outside of the casino. And they're just like, well, oh, okay, yeah, mijo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, go see, go see, uh... Go see your boy in Las Vegas. If you're out there, Vegas, please go see him. What's your website? You got a website they can go buy tickets? Yeah, it's frankiequinones.com. Frankiequinones.com. Go see him. Uh, I really appreciate you coming by. You, he's got to go to a fancy party. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's a fancy motherfucker <laughs> now, man. They're not judging you now. This dude gets on TV. He's living that life. <laughs> little um, Mexican man in Malibu. Yeah. Little Mexican in Malibu, aren't you? <laughs> Look at you, you little sweet little Mexican man. <laughs> 
Uh, go have fun. I appreciate you. We end the episode the same way. A creeper gave us a little love. You can look into that camera and uh, say one word or one phrase that uh, that you want to end the episode forever. So whenever you're ready, go ahead. Love. Be about that shit, homie. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers.